This is Aster's Let's Talk. And today, the topic of the day is fibroid embolization. The word fibroid is very common, but we know only as a word or a term. But to know about it, we have with us Dr. Tahsin Nedwanjeri, interventional cardiologist, Aster Mims Cortical, Kerala. Hello, doctor. Hello. As we said, if you can brief us on the topic, fibroid. Fibroids are uh, some tumors occurring on the uh, walls of the uterus in the age in females in the age group between 20 to around 50 55 years they are non cancers not they are not cancers okay. okay so these things will grow this is very common extremely common some studies are saying that up to 80 percent of the women will be having uh, fibroids but most of them will be asymptomatic they will not have any issues with, because of the fibroid mm -hmm. many a times the fibroids are detected by some scans taken for some other purpose okay okay but some of them around one around one or 15 to 20 25 percent persons will have uh, symptoms because of uh, fibroids the main symptom because of fibroid is excess bleeding during menstruation mm -hmm. then second uh, is uh, ex painful menstruation that is undue pain that is pain lasting few days and it may be severe enough for an admission or something like that and when the fibroids are big they are uh, growing very fast and big these fibroids can compress upon the urinary bladder and cause some urinary symptoms recurrent urinary infections mm -hmm. and when if it is uh, if it is compressing backwards it can cause constipation back pain leg pain and all those things okay. Once the patient has got severe bleeding because of fibroids, they may go for anemia and these patients will have fatigue and uh, all other symptoms of anemia. Anemia related yeah. issues. Um, not directly connected to the fibroids, mm -hmm. but anemia related things. So uh, this is the situation with fibroids. So it's an extremely common disease with these kind of symptoms. When these patients come to us, to a doctor, usually they will go to a gynecologist and once the scan is taken, you can see the fibroid. That's the only test that is required for the diagnosis of fibroid. Okay. Once the fibroid is detected, usually what we do is the doctor will give some medicines, many a times hormonal things and other non-hormonal medications, and many of them will get relief of the symptoms. Okay. If the, these patients did not get any relief with these medicines, then the next option that we had initially was surgery, to remove the fibroid through surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The surgery can be either removal of the fibroid alone, leaving behind the uterus, or removal of the entire uterus with the fibroid. Okay. Okay. So these are the options we had initially. Okay. So now we have a new procedure called fibroid embolization, which stands between the medical therapy and the surgery. Mm -hmm. Once the medical therapy fails, the patient need not go directly to surgery. They can go for this embolization. Okay. Instead of Surgery. Going for a direct surgery. Direct surgery. Okay, doctor. Understood. So this embolization, what we are doing is, it's a simple principle. Any organ in the body need blood for its survival. Mm. The fibroid also requires blood for its survival. What we are doing is, we are cutting off the blood supply to the fibroid. Okay. Hmm? Once the blood supply is lost, the fibroids will shrink. Once it shrinks, then the symptoms of this excess bleeding, back pain, the, men, uh, the difficulty, the, the pain during menstruation, all these things will subset. Okay, doctor. 90% is the success rate of this procedure. And the procedure is not a surgical procedure. This is a very simple procedure done through the wrist, like an angiogram. Okay, doctor. Understood? Okay, any, any questions from your side? After effects of the procedure. <clears throat> you the you mean to ask about the side effects side effects or after effects like after doing this procedure is there I, anything that we need to take care yeah um, the procedure actually uh, will take around 15 minutes that's all okay so simple procedure yes patient if we are doing procedure at eight o'clock in the morning the patient can be discharged eight o'clock in the evening okay. okay just for the observation you just observation. Keep, keep the patient okay and the procedure what we are doing is we are introducing a small catheter, a small tube mm -hmm. and it will be taken through the arms to the uterus okay. and the procedure is done. Took the catheter off and the patient can be shifted directly to the room without the ICU. Okay. 
okay and after the, this one we will be giving some medicine for 2 to 3 days mm -hmm. and after that there is no medicines and as the blood supply reduces the fibroid size reduces it will take around 2 to 3 months for the result now after three, one, 2 to 3 cycles the patient will feel that there is no excess bleeding there is no pain and all those things okay, even we had results in the next immediate cycle itself okay. the pain completely subsides and after this procedure the patient will have abdominal pain because this fibroid is shrinking, uh, shrinking. it is not having uh, blood supply to counter that we will give some medicines okay. only for 12, 12 hours the pain will be there for 12 hours mm -hmm. that's why we are keeping the patient 12 hours in the hospital okay doctor the patient can there is no need of any rest mm -hmm. after the procedure immediately after the procedure if the patient want to walk she can walk okay. she can go to the toilet she can take uh, lift the weight she can do anything get back to routine immediately within two hours okay doctor. she can do is whatever there any she chance of reoccurrence of this definitely it is there as long as the uterus is there there is a chance of fibroid coming back or mm -hmm. uh, new fibroids are forming that depends on the age of the patient Usually these things will happen until the menopause, okay. let us say uh, uh, until 50 years, let us mm -hmm. say. So if we are doing a procedure for a 47 year old lady, the chance of the fibroid coming up is almost nil. True. But if you are doing this procedure for 30 year old lady, she has got 20 years, yes. the chances yes. will be around 10%. On average, the chance of recurrence is 10% or okay. in other words, 90% of the patients will not have a recurrence. Okay, doctor. So, in case of recurrence, would you suggest the same treatment or how in do you In Western think? world, they are doing the same procedure. Repeated procedures can be done because it's a different fibro. We can cut off the blood supply of that fibro also. Mm -hmm. But if that, that that is patient's choice. If there is a recurrence, they can either go for it, this one. One, I asked the same question to one of my patients after embolization. She had multiple surgeries for some other reasons and not for gynecologic procedures. Mm -hmm. And this embolization also. Then I asked, how, is, how do you compare this embolization with the surgery? She was planning for surgery for this oh, fibroid. Okay. She told that I can do 10 embolizations instead of the single surgery. <laughs> so it's fact. so easy. The procedure is so easy. The patient can uh, walk and do the activities. Because basically, the problem is the fibroid is happening to ladies in the mid-30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. They are the backbone of the family. They are doing all the activities. Kids will be there, husband will be there. True, true, true. So once they, are, they we are putting them to rest, it is almost impossible for them to take family that rest. <laughs> so these people are taking uh, help from us and they can avoid this rest. And okay. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor. Okay. As we say, kindly write in your queries and doctor will be answering your queries. And we'll be back with more sessions. Thank you so much.